This passage comes to us directly from the prior passages we've read in Luke about Luke's ministry on his way to Jerusalem and his teaching to the people he meets and even to the disciples of his message and his determination to reach his goal. And today's passage will illuminate further in a sermon entitled Chipotle. I need to explain my sermon title, and I will in just a minute. But first, I wanted to read to you a famous devotional poem by a 17th century English cleric and parliamentarian whose name you will recognize as John Donne. The poem I am about to read to you is really an extract from a longer work he entitled, not very poetically, Devotions Upon Emergent Occasions and Several Steps in My Sickness. These devotions were, in fact, his daily reflection, organized in 23 parts with three sections each that he penned in 1623 as part of a daily journal that he kept while he was recovering from a serious illness from which he nearly died. And as he recovered, he developed his journal of daily writings into a devotional work and wrote some extraordinarily beautiful theological reflections like the following. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thy friends or of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. Do you know the last line of this poem? For whom the bell tolls? Not to be confused with Ernest Hemingway's book of the same title, written 317 years later, inspired by the Dunn poem, for whom does the bell toll? The call to action, the interaction of humanity. What on earth do Chipotle and John Donne have in common? And how does Luke's gospel fit in? I will explain. But first, let me show you an example of what John Donne and probably Luke and most definitely Jesus had in mind. This week, our church Christian ed team, led by Nancy Liardi and animated by Julie Shaver with a week-long kid-led puppet drama and a cast of 40 adult leaders, including Jen Thompson and Carol Carr, 38 youth leaders, 15 youth leaders in training, and puppets, including a frog prince, taught 101 children from our local community, kindergarten through sixth grade, stories about Jesus, Bible verses, a code of Christian ethics. They focused on themes of faithfulness, obedience to God's teaching, forgiveness, gratitude, and the gracious gift of Jesus Christ, all in five days. Now, if you count me into the mix, and all I did was show up to pray for everybody each morning, and then there was that Jeremiah was a bullfrog dance I did on the last day, but I won't dwell on that. But if you count up all of us together, including our minister of music, codenamed Mrs. Wonderful Day, I figure it comes to about 95 VBS camp workers for 101 BBS campers, a ratio of nearly one to one, which makes me think, as far as BBS goes, our workers were abundant, and our harvest was plentiful indeed. But this is where Luke's gospel comes in, and Jesus, and eventually Chipotle. 
Jesus had what I call a Tripoli problem. Unlike our robust VBS program, Jesus was starting from scratch. He was spreading the good news of God's kingdom come near, with absolutely no one really knowing what he was talking about. And he was pretty much on his own. And he knew that working alone was not going to work out for very long. So he gathered in his 12 disciples, the ones called and named, the men who were the inner core of his ministry. Then there were the women, unnamed women, except for Susanna and Joanna and Mary Magdalene, so far, and his mom, Mary, of course. She was fully aware of what was going on, even if she continued to ponder in her heart and not talk much about it. And later there was Lydia, the seller of purple silk, and Mary and Martha, and all those other women of means who financed Jesus' ministry and probably even made his meals, depending on where they were going. So by the time we get to chapter 10 of Luke's Gospel, which Peter very kindly read to you earlier, we find ourselves this morning with Jesus. And Jesus has one of those overwhelming days. Like all of you who chair commissions have, when you realize you only have three members in a whole new program year facing you in September. The harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Can anybody help? And that's when Jesus took matters into his own hands. He appointed, in fact, the word is translated best as ordained, 70 or possibly 72 new people to spread the good news that the kingdom of God was near. He sent them out, cast them out, urgently pushed them out the door to do good works, to heal people, and to pray for them. And as an aside, this is where our commission chairs might take special note, Jesus told the 70 leaders, ask the Lord Jesus to send out laborers into his harvest. In other words, pray to God that the new helpers will come your way and deputize them. Seventy new helpers. Jesus sent them out to serve the greater good and teach the good news. Twelve disciples plus the women and then the additional seventy. That takes Jesus right up to the size of our VBS program in one fell swoop. And his Tripoli problem disappeared. And I'll explain that more in a minute. But now he was fully staffed, and he sent his people to work in pairs, in teams, interconnected, in community, to do the Lord's work together. He gave the 70 instructions on what to do, where to stay, how to pack, and when to leave. He was clear about keeping the peace, but not enduring insult. Leave if they reject you, but do no harm. Simply shake the dust from your sandals and move on. For the kingdom of God has come near. And that is the same message with different ramifications, whether people welcome the messengers or send them away. Whoever listens to you listens to me, Jesus explained to his new recruits. And whoever rejects you rejects me. And whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. So let's talk Chipotle. We have a Chipotle problem in our church. A little like Jesus before he called the 70. And here is what I mean. You all know about our food pantry and how successful it is. Feeding sometimes 60 families a week. Stopped by the goodwill of all of you and several other groups in the community. And if you come by on a Thursday morning, you can see in the social center that our pantry expands in the summer to include the fresh produce donated by the farmer's market held in town every Saturday. Fruits and vegetables that did not sell but could keep for a few more days on our shelves. But what you may not know is that our church also takes in food from the Chipotle restaurant chain. Yes, we're part of the Chipotle food chain. We pick up Chipotle food that is fresh for consumption, but not sold by the end of the evening sell date limit. And there is a small window of time when that food can still be given away to others in need, but not sold as same-day produce. 
So for months now, our church has picked up Chipotle food donations three days a week and donated them to the food pantry for pickup by our hungry neighbors. But when I say our church picks up the Chipotle, I really mean one person. And for a long time, the same person, week after week. And when I heard about that solitary ministry, I thought, well, it's impressive, the faithfulness, the loyalty, and the commitment of that one person. But that's a community ministry waiting to happen. And one solitary Christian waiting to burn out. So I started looking for others to share the work of picking up Chipotle food and delivering it to the social center several mornings a week. And I asked myself, what would Jesus do? And that's when our scripture lesson for this morning gave me the answer loud and clear. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. As simple as that. If you need help, pray to God and the help will come. So here's my prayer. Dear Lord God, Jesus, harvest came. We've got a Chipotle problem. And yet, we've got nearly 300 congregants worshiping at the church. And if we had 70 volunteers, or 50, or even 25, we could all take turns picking up food from Chipotle one week per family. Maybe one week per family per year. New workers who would work as a team, sharing the labor and supporting one another, helping out when one is on vacation and another is home with the flu, delivering food to those who need it, while making the pickup and delivery burden that much easier, the harvest that much greater, the workers that many more. Please help us find more people who might like to help, but have yet to hear your call, who did not even know your need who would truly love to help. And Lord, while we are talking about calling new laborers to discipleship, help us find new congregants who would like to serve on a commission or participate in a committee for international peace and justice, for health and wellness in our community, for deciding on charitable giving, for contemplating new activities in worship, the arts, public life, for serving on the building and grounds committee, Especially women whose wisdom would be welcome there, and men who love our campus and want to make it beautiful. Lord, your people in this church are as plentiful as your harvest, but we have not all heard your call. Help me as your servant preacher amplify the opportunities to serve you that lie abundant at this church, as abundant as the harvest of good work, all for the greater good that awaits us. I pray these things in your holy name. Amen. Now, in case you're inspired to pick up Chipotle, or to serve on the commission, or share your gifts with this church in any way, I have left a bright neon colored card in your pew. For some it's white, for some it's green, for some it's pink. And I invite you to write down your name and cell phone number, email address, and the service ministry you would like to offer, or the specific week between now and Christmas when you might like to pick up a Chipotle meal, or which commission you would like to serve, and place your card in the offering plate this morning so we can contact you and get you started with the ministries of this church, ministries that you might not even know existed, like Chipotle meals. Who knows, you might even like to take a meal home for yourself. We work together because we are one community in Christ, and each one of us is interconnected with the community around us and with each other. We are not living in isolation. We cannot live in a private bubble and be responsible members of our society. God calls us to love one another, to care for each other, to encourage each other, to protect the widow and the orphan, to encourage the faint of heart, to feed the hungry, house the homeless. And we do this in and for the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, for he calls us to action. And when you hear your name called, you'll know it, and there'll be no holding you back. So come to the table, this communion table. Be fed for the journey. Receive the grace of God and listen to God's call on your life, here and now.
Discover what you can do to make a positive difference in someone's life. Now remember the poem I told you about by John Donne? You remember how it ends? I never did read you the very last line, but it ends like this. Never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.